Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Animaking 2. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. And if you're not guys, I hope I can make it a little bit better with these what ifs today. So I'm going to be giving you part 10 of what if Naruto had a new dream that will change everything. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in social media platform. And also guys, stay in tune. For the what ifs to come over in Anime King and Anime King 3, I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them. And remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying and talking about to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro! So, the last spot we left off. As Naruto was finishing up his date with Zana, everything was going wonderful. At the end of the date, he told her that he loved her. It wasn't like this was the first time he was telling her that, but there was just something about this time that caught her off guard as she felt her heart skip a beat several times. As she didn't say anything but hold on to him, as her feelings were becoming more and more complicated. For the remaining time, everything was going along normal until Naruto was woken up rather early by Shikamaru as he wondered what the hell was going on. Sasuke had deserted the village as Naruto was pissed off. The group set out to retrieve Sasuke as Sakura had stopped them, begging Naruto to bring Sasuke back. She knew that Naruto was stronger he has proved that many times, so she just begged him to bring him back. With that the group headed off, as they came upon Drobo, as Choji stayed behind to take him on, as the sound force started to split, leaving behind members as the Konoha force started to leave behind members as well, as Naruto stayed behind to take on Tiawaya. The girl was too fixed with her obsession towards Urchimaru. There was nothing that Naruto can do, as he hated killing girls like this, but he had to. As he snapped her neck, ahead and off he found Shikamaru in the ground, as Lee was still facing off against Kimimaru. But before anything else could happen, there was a sudden explosion from the coffin, as Sasuke emerged. As Naruto went after him, Lee told him that he got this. As Naruto chased after Sasuke towards the valley of the end, where the both of them start to battle. Quickly and easily putting Sasuke in his place, Sasuke had no choice but to enter stage 2 of the curse mark as he pulled out a bleed. He has been working on his Kenjutsu, as he knew that Naruto had the physical strength stronger than him, but with his bleed, bleed was unpredictable and you would never know if you could stop it as it could end your life so quickly. The both of them clash. What Sasuke failed to realize was that lightning was weak against wind. As Naruto broke right through Sasuke's blade and ripped right into him. It was a fatal wound as Naruto dragged his body over to the side as he just sat there. Sasuke begged him before he died to kill Itachi. Knowing that Itachi is a part of the Akatsuki who come after him soon enough, Naruto told him that he would die one way or another as Sasuke died. Coming back to the village, Sakura couldn't believe it when she saw Naruto carrying Sasuke. Her emotion couldn't handle it as she ran off. Time skip. Jiraiya was telling her that he had to go on a 3 year training trip with him. There was a lot of political crap going on right now especially seeing that Naruto killed Sasuke. So Naruto had to agree as he made his way to say goodbye. Tintin, Hinata, Ayam, as he also said goodbye to Zana. She didn't mind the 3 year gap because she wanted some time to figure out her feelings towards the blonde. But Naruto was going to miss her a lot. As Naruto was then kidnapped by Anko and Kurenai. Knowing that he was going to leave for 3 years, they decided to spend as much time as possible with him. As Naruto knew that he would be late, seeing that Jiraiya was waiting for him, well, the man could wait a couple of hours. So yeah guys, that was basically what I thought of you guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself, so what do you say begin this new episode? As Naruto was making his way towards the gate, he had to come to a sudden stop. Sakura was standing there. He hadn't seen her since he told her about Sasuke's death. Naruto. She said in a sad tone. Sakura has been devastated by Sasuke's death. 
She spent several days in her room just hold up crying. Ino came by to console her and comfort her but it didn't help. She even felt anger towards Naruto for killing Sasuke. She was unable to control her feelings. Ino own crush on Sasuke had died when she saw her teammate injured. In Choji case he was near death as he thought that leaving Konoha would give him more power and he caused her teammates and her friends to be in critical condition. Sakura had only left the room to attend Sasuke's funeral. Afterwards, she learned from Snadi that Naruto and Kakashi had argued to have Sasuke buried as a loyal Konoha Nin despite his defection. The elders had opposed it, saying that traitors didn't need to be buried as loyal. It would tarnish the sacrifice of those who were truly loyal. As Naruto was the one that, well, made it happen seeing that he told them that it was a curse mark that messed with Sasuke's mind. The elders tried to use that opportunity to get the curse mark as it made someone so loyal, seeing that Naruto could have, well, applied it with less risk than Orochimaru. That anger Snadi to think that they would ever think something like that as she threw them out of her office. Sakura angered Daiwi at Naruto when she heard that Naruto did the best he can, but Sasuke just pushed it too far. Even though Sasuke tried to kill him, Naruto fought to preserve his dignity, and that was something she could appreciate. She always saw how dark Sasuke got whenever Naruto reached to a new height, got stronger, but she always pushed past it. She just couldn't understand why Sasuke was so jealous of Naruto. He was so strong and talented and he progressed very far in the short time they had been Jennings. She just couldn't make sense of his need to be the strongest out of all. I know that Sinai-sama gave her some perspective on Sasuke's death. She couldn't help but feel guilty. If she hadn't been so weak she could have stopped Sasuke herself or at least alerted someone before he left the village. That way maybe things wouldn't have gone so far out of hand. Choji was literally near death. Nature was also near death as well. Kiba and Akamaru were severely injured but thankfully not life threatening. The only reason why Shikamaru was alive was because he was lucky enough to wear his Sunin vest. Lee had only suffered mild injuries but if not for Gar he would have been killed. And Naruto ended up killing his teammate when Sasuke took the battle too far. As Nadia later read the report on the battle that Naruto gave and she was surprised that Sasuke used every lethal technique against Naruto along with several that she didn't know he had learned. What is it Sakura? Sakura noted that he hadn't called her Pinky or any insulted nickname in a while now, but he kept on calling Sasuke Princess. She could only guess that he saw something in her that was worthy of him calling her by her name, but he hadn't seen the same thing in Sasuke. She couldn't help but be proud of that despite her grief over Sasuke's death. I just want to say, I'm sorry. For what? Naruto said honestly confused. If I was stronger, I could have come with you, and maybe we could have saved Sasuke-kun. Maybe, said Naruto, but not very likely. Huh? said Sakura, confused. Sasuke was pretty far gone by the time I got to him. He even mistook me for his brother. I think he was pretty far gone even before he decided to leave the village and activating the curse mark second level just pushed him off the edge. Oh, so we didn't know that we were losing him, she said. She felt sad and guilty that she didn't even know that. In our defense, he didn't act any different than usual and he was always broody and antisocial. If you ask me, he could have used the help of a Yamanaka therapist, but you know he would never agree to that. Yeah, Sakura said. As she couldn't see Sasuke going to any therapy, he would have been too proud. Sakura moved forward and hugged him, surprising Naruto. I'll get stronger Naruto, so I won't just be in the way all the time. She promised tearfully, losing one teammate had been bad enough. She didn't want to just stand alone watching her remain in one fight because she was too weak to do anything. You do that Sakura, and try to keep Snyder from drinking too much while you're at it. As Naruto placed one hand on her upper back, he had to admit that Sakura had surprised him. She had been a fangirl when they first became a team. It was hard to believe that she could change so much. With that, the two teammates said their goodbyes and went towards their respective Sani teachers. As Naruto saw Jerry at the gate, he took a look back at Konoha as he then turned back and the both of them headed off. Time skip. Three years later, as two very big men were walking into Konoha after a long absence, drawing a great deal of attention, given that the both of them are quite well known. One of them stood at 6 feet 3 inches with a long mane of white hair, with his green clothing covered by a red heiori, with his wooden sandals. It was none other than Jerry of the Sanin. The next man to him was even bigger, standing at a whopping 6 foot 7 inches. Long blonde hair flowed onto his waist in a ponytail, a few strands over his face, as he had on that open black leather coat with no shirt underneath, leather pants and steel toe boots. He was very easy to recognize as he had outgrown his other clothes. These new designs were quite well fitting and make him look more badass. 
threw his scroll marks on each cheek, and not to mention his fangs as he glared at one of the villagers who were gawking at him. You know, you could have tried not to scare everyone you meet on your first day back. Jerry commented to Naruto as the villager had moved off quickly after Naruto gave that like a glare. Whatever, I got somewhere to be, so I'll leave reporting Snaddy to you. Without another question, he simply vanished. Jerry made a protest, but the student was already gone. Grumbling about students that didn't have any respect to their sensei, Jerry made his way off. As for his custom, he completely ignored the doorway in. That was Trump exiting our entrance. His way is much better as he climbed up to the window. Jeraya, would it kill you to use a damn door? I irritated Snaddy Axe. Hmm, don't know, Haim. It might. So where's Naruto, she said, getting right to the point. That is so mean, Snaddy. We haven't seen each other in three years, and the first thing you ask about is another man. Jeraya pouted. Can it, you old perv, she said. Now where is he? He said he had something to do, and he ditched me the moment we got through the gate. I see, Snaddy said, their eyebrow twitching slightly. She would really like to know what was more important and reported to her after a three-year training trip. Well, since you're here, you might as well tell me how the training trip went. Well, said Snaddy. He frightened me, said Jaraya. Oh, said Snaddy as she leaned forward in interest. As far as his skills go, he done nothing more than train his body and controlling chakra chains. He's made great leap in his funjutsu and his chakra capacity though. That doesn't seem like a lot of progress for three years of training, said Snaddy. You two haven't been wasting time pouring around the elemental nations, have you? No, 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 said Jerry, raising his hand. It's just that it's the only thing he's actually been able to work on. His chakra reserves got so massive and dense, he can't really do anything else. I have no idea how good he is at phone just by now, but he's long since passed me. He's that good already, Snaddy said. She knew that Uzumakis have a, well, great history in phone jutsu, but to make that leap in such short time. Better even. I'm not sure, but I think he's been experimenting with space-time ninjutsu and lots of other seals that he won't let me see. He must have destroyed tens of thousands of shy clones with Funjutsu accident. Hmm, so how good would you say he is? About his uses of the Kayubi Chakra. He wouldn't even consider it, said Jaraya. The first time I suggested it, he told me that he would never use it and that I must never mention it again. As to how good he is in a certain fight, I could probably still beat him. Well, it depends on what trick he used in Funjutsu. But if you let him choose a battlefield and prepare, I am not sure there is anyone in the elemental nation that can defeat him now. What? You don't think he's that dangerous to Funjutsu, said Snaddy. She had no idea why Nerd didn't want to learn to use a Kayubi Chakra, but there's no point forcing him if he didn't want to. Besides, he was dangerous enough without it. There's a good reason why Uzumaki members are so feared, and why it took 20,000 shinobis to destroy a clan, with just about 1,000 members. Chubi told Jerry was frightened what Naruto would be doing later on if he was already so dangerous at the age of 21. Alright, but that's a good thing, isn't it? It means he's ready for what the world's going through at him, said Snaddy. That is not what worried me at this point, said Jaraya. What worries me is, in the entire three years, Naruto only slept with four women. Snaddy glared at Jaraya as she looked towards him. Why the hell would he bring up that? No, 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 it's not what you think. He's been different. Different? How, said Snaddy, calming down a bit. You know how many women used to sleep with on a regular basis? Snaddy nodded. At first it seemed like it was going to continue that way, but two months into the trip he seemed to lost all interest. Snaddy raised the armon, that was an obviously short time for all that reversal. He would still talk to them but rejected the blatant offers, no matter how beautiful the women were that came onto him. And he seemed to be in a bad mood most of the time as well, said Jaraya. So he just suddenly lost interest in women, almost as soon as you left the village, said Snaddy. She was somewhat annoyed at Naruto sleeping around but this rapid change was strange and worrisome. I would have started on learning Senjutsu by now if I wasn't so concerned about his attitude. He's even taking the meditating. I have no idea what brought that on. I can only assume there was something or someone in this village that kept his spirits up. It was also why he was against the idea of leaving, despite not having any fond feelings for the village. Well, I hope you go back to normal now that he's back here. Meanwhile, Naruto made his way towards the apartment in a hurry. It has been three years since he saw her, and he wouldn't waste any time talking to anyone without seeing her the moment he's back at the village. It had only taken a couple of weeks before Zana absent in his life started to take a toll on him. Nothing seemed interesting if she wasn't there with him. His separation from her also killed his interest in sleeping around the woman. As he found mortal women silly and their mortal concerns, know that he had to deal with them without her around. Koichis were much better but they weren't her. The reason why Naruto meditated, as he was told by her that the Reaper dead still connected them, so he started meditating to try if he could feel her presence. His greatest hope was that he could establish a mental link between them. But it would be too optimistic, he thought, to think that he would accomplish that so quickly. None of that mattered though, as he slammed open the door of his apartment 
as he didn't see her anywhere. There was a fear growing in his heart that something had happened, or she decided that she didn't want anything else to do with him anymore. He was about to do another sweep of the apartment when a hand wrapped around him. So here, she was cut off immediately as nervous as pain. He had to lower himself given that he was so tall now to kiss her lips. Wasting no time he picked her and placed her against a wall as he started to kiss her furiously. As she ripped off his jacket, what followed was a frantic removal of clothing as they made their way towards the bedroom, destroying things in their path. They could talk later, it was time to get acquainted once again in a physical manner. Many, many, many hours later, they lay together, both of them satisfied at the moment. I missed you, Nurtis said, laying his chin on top of her head as he had his arms wrapped around her and her face was pressed against his chest. I'd noticed. You've gotten even bigger, she said. Naruto was sure that she wasn't just talking about his height. And you're even more beautiful than I remember. And you are still as corny with your flattery as I remember, she said, as she laughed slightly. When he had left, she was sure that three years would pass in the eye blink. Instead, it dragged on like three centuries. Never before had she missed anyone. Never before had something dragged on so long. Never before had she felt depressed without someone being there. It was tempting to just go and find him without regarding secrecy, but she had restrained herself, and instead she examined her own feelings. What had been a fondness and respect for the blood had grown much stronger without her even knowing. His presence there and his devotion, without him being there, the truth had become obvious. For the past three years, she didn't know what she would do with herself. Often, she just came to his apartment for the familiarity of having him being there, though some of these shinobis were at least amusing with the stupidity they get up to. Despite not wanting to go into his privacy, she found herself using the Reaper Deck Seal to listen in on his thoughts occasionally. It had brought a feeling of warmth to know that she was in his thoughts. Now being held like this, she felt happy, truly happy, as everything felt right to the world at the moment. She sighed and burrowed deeper into his chest. Welcome home, beloved, she said in a soft tone. She had no idea when it happened, but somewhere along the line, he stole her heart. This man, who when he was a child made a promise that he truly didn't understand. Even once he understood, he brushed away the impossibility, and he said that he would do it no matter what. She didn't feel love for him then, but his determination never wavered, making her feel sparks of well happiness seem trying. But now, look what he's done to her. He had been determined to win her over or die trying. His experience in Wave Country had only made him love her even more. Love has always been something strange to her, but now she understood. It has a new experience wanting another person to be happy. She had never felt any better. She could see why humans spend so much time chasing this feeling now. Naruto looked down the smile on his face as he tapped her lips again. They had been ready to fall asleep before, but there would be no sleep now. Time skip. Two 17-year-old girls were making their way near the apartment. One had pink hair with green eyes, the other one had black hair with lavender eyes with no pupil. Sakura had heard that Naruto was back in the village, she was making her way to welcome him back. It was pure chance that she found him at all along the way. Both of them had missed him terribly and wanted to see how he has changed. Sakura still wore clothing to what she had wear, but it was a different design. Hinata on the other hand was quite a bit different from how she had been three years ago. She had done her best to take her towards the heart and find some pride in herself. A close relationship to Neji had helped a lot in this. She didn't wear the oversized coat anymore, instead a simple t-shirt. Under the clothes, she wore an armor mesh that most shinobi utilized. She also had medical tape wrapped around her shins and forearms, along with pads for her knees and elbows. Her father and elder didn't approve of her dressing, but she did her best to ignore them. It wasn't like they ever approved of anything in the way. Without the coat hiding her figure, her chest was on full display. She was secretly pleased that Sakura, Ino, and even Tenten envy her figure. When they made it to his apartment, they knocked on the door, but they received no answer. Maybe he's not home, Hinata said. Or else would he be, said Sakura, as she reached for the doorknob. To her surprise, it was unlocked. She knew that this was a rough part of the village, and Naruto just left it unlocked like that. Well, she didn't know that no one ever dared thinking of stealing from Naruto. The two of them made their way inside. They became alarmed when they saw clothing and blood on the floor and walls. As Zana and Naruto went at a bit too hard, with their nails and her biting down, Naruto biting down her neck. Did you think someone attacked him? Hinata said, as she started to become tense and alert. We should check the rest of the apartment, Sakura said. The two of them went silent and went through the rest of the room, looking at the overturned furniture. The tray led to the bedroom. Sakura had a bad feeling about opening that door. Hinata, on the other hand, was never exposed to the side of Naruto, much like Sakura, so she simply opened the door. She hadn't bothered to activate her Byakan, so that is why she came in to see her surrogate, Big Brother. Leaned against a bedpost with a beautiful red haired woman leaning on his chest. They were thankfully covered by a sheet. Naruto, who are these girls? And why have they come into our bedroom? Said Zan as she turned towards him. The pink haired one's my teammate Sakura. And the other one's Kamalika's sister, Hinata. Naruto was completely unbothered, he heard it not just fine. 
but he didn't feel like shouting for them to come in or getting up. He didn't miss that Zana said our bedroom. That made him happy. Um, sorry, we saw the blood stains, and we thought that something might have happened, Sucker said, her face blushing red. Something did happen, said Naruto. The blood stains are just a side effect of a very enthusiastic hello. The two girls were still right to the touch. I see. So these are the ones you told me about, said Zana. As she got out of the bed and walked closer to them, as she wasn't really concerned that she was completely naked. For a moment, I thought that you ordered some extra entertainment. She looked at the two girls. It was clear what kind of entertainment she was talking about. As Naruto simply laughed, Hinata and Sakura were struggling not to pass out from embarrassment. Naruto, maybe you should introduce us to your guest, said Sakura. The fact that Zana was completely naked, it was throwing her off. Oh sure, Sakura, Hinata. This is Zana, someone very dear to me. It's a pleasure to meet you, Hinata said, with a small bow. She had managed to get rid of her stutter, but she feel like she was going to die where she stood right now, because of embarrassment. Why yes, it is a pleasure to meet me, isn't it, said Zana. Neither one of the Kunoichis were able to react to that statement, as the girls seemed rather arrogant, but they brushed it off, as Naruto was arrogant as well. Naruto stood up, but he wrapped the sheet around his waist. For that, Sakura and Hinata were glad. When he walked closer to them, they could see how much bigger he has gotten. Wow, you got even bigger, Sakura said, as Zana went into the living room, theater Ikata. That is what she said, said Naruto. Pervert, that's not what I meant, she yelled. But, it is really what I said, said Zana, as she returned. Fully dressed now. I can't believe it, Naruto, you found a woman that is just as shameless as you, said Sakura. Oh, but I have known Naruto for a long time now, said Zana. Indeed she has, she was the one that took my virgin to you, know? I was just a poor, clueless, 16-year-old, when she took advantage of me for the first time. Naruto said that fake sniffle. Hmm, as if you haven't been walking out to the thought of me since you were 11, said Zana. To Sakura's surprise, Naruto actually blushed. That was something she never saw before. It was glorious to see someone embarrassing him. She already liked this woman. But I do agree you were clueless. You didn't know what the first thing to do to a woman, besides sticking it in. Ah, you know about that, didn't you, said Naruto. Of course I knew. Considering her previous living arrangement, it was hard not to know. As she referred to the fact that she was sealed inside from the time. Naruto then turned, as he looked down. Hey, when did Hinata pass out? Huh. I think it was when I mentioned about you walking off, said Zana. Time skip. Oi, it's okay. How about a bowl of ramen to celebrate my return? Naruto, you're back, the man said. One bowl of ramen coming right up, he said, as he was happy that Naruto's back in the village. Hey, old man, said Naruto. Where's Ayam today? I was hoping to catch up with her a bit. Oh, Ayam only come to help me out occasionally these days. Huh? Why is that, said Naruto? Well, my little Ayam chan is a married woman now, and he's expecting a baby on top of it. Took his head a fatherly sniffle. The type of sniffle that all father get when their daughter isn't a little baby anymore. Naruto blink. Ayam got married while he was gone? As he had to think about that three times to make sure he was hearing right. She got married while I was gone? My big sister is married and pregnant. She went out with a guy that I haven't even checked out before. And she's pregnant? Someone had sex with Ayam? And I wasn't here to put the fear of God in him? Who is it? Said Naruto. You mean who did she marry? Took his head. Yes, yeah, said Naruto. Masaru Inzaka, a decent guy, came here to get something to eat and asked Ayam out. He treated her real nice and they hit it off. They got married last year and Ayam learned that she was pregnant over a month ago. Took it then turned back so he blinked. Naruto was gone. Took your release a sigh. He knew that their relationship was a purely sister and brother type. As he really hoped that Naruto didn't start any problems. Meanwhile, the Inuzaka compound was rather calm most time. Well, calm as it would be with dogs barking. The Inuzaka compound had a wall like the Hayugas and the Uchiyas. As that was to keep their dogs in. At the moment everything was calm, that was until a gate was kicked off the hinges and crashed far away. Ayam, a voice said, as everyone is alerted. Hannah was the first to arrive on the scene as she was the closest, as she had her triplets, the dogs, as they growled at the intruder. Naruto was, well, not ready to be with them as he was here to see Ayam, as he growled back at the dogs, bearing his fangs. Hannah watched as her triplets went down, lowering their heads. What the hell? Ninja dogs weren't supposed to react like that. Especially to a human, they were trained not to react with fear so easily. The fact that this blonde you could recognize as Uzumaki Naruto with his type of clothing intimidate her triplets with one single growl. They could probably sense that he was out of their league. Naruto, you're back! Came a happy shout and a brown hair blur crashed into the blonde. You gotten so big, she says, wrapped her arms around his neck. As Naruto hugged her, keeping in mind not to add too much pressure because she was pregnant. What's going on, Tasumi says he arrived. Looks like Naruto came back to the village and heard that Ayam married into her clan. Kiba did warn us that he might overreact a bit, Hannah said. Just a bit? Yeah. Said Tasumi as she looked at the busted gate that was going to be expensive to repair. When Masaru had first started to date Ayam, Kiba had warned him how protective Naruto was 
of his circuit, Big Sister. And he might react, well, kind of violently when he heard that Ayom was married while he was away. What's this I heard about my big sister getting married and pregnant while I was gone? Nothing too dramatic about it in route. I just met a guy I liked and went on a date with him. Things went wonderful and he asked me to marry him. And a short while ago I found that I was pregnant. Ayom said that I rolled. Nothing that you need to break down the gate for. My big sister's married and pregnant. Damn straight is worth breaking down the gate for. Now, where's this guy that think he's good enough for you? I am um, led him towards a man that seemed to be in his mid-twenties. Usual wild brown hair, but it was tame than most in the Zuckers. His eyes were black, and it lacked the animal slits that most of the members had. He had the black markings under his eyes though. He was a fairly handsome looking guy, but nothing out of the ordinary. Slightly above average height and wearing a vest. Next to him was a brown dog. In short, he was nothing special. Naruto, this is my husband, Masaru, Inuzaka, Masaru-kun, this is my little brother, Naruto Uzumaki, I am introduced. Little brother, right, Masaru said, looking at Naruto who stood over him like a mountain. Like most Inuzaka, Masaru was rather rash, but for them and their standards, he was rather tame. He knew that he wasn't a powerhouse and he was never likely to become one, but that was fine with him. He was an upper level chunin that was looking to advance the Jonin before he met Ayam. Now that he was mad and had a child in way, he had reconsidered getting a promotion as he didn't want to get killed on the more difficult missions that Joni received and leaving Ayam and his child on his own. He knew that this was coming ever since Kiba told that Ayam had an overprotective brother figure in the Kayube Jinjo in Naruto Uzumaki. He didn't have anything against Naruto for holding the Kayube, but he had been a bit skeptical when Kiba had warned him about Naruto. He was glad that Kiba was out training with his team now because he was sure that he would hear I told you so from him. His name dog has already told him that the blonde was dangerous, but that was obvious. He kicked the gate off and sent it flying a few feet away. Neither one of them said anything yet, just having a steering contest. As the Inuzakas were watching, none of them would have, well, hurt the blonde for a come checking to say his sister was alright. Unlike the Uchiha's or Hayugas, blood ties wasn't really important to the Inuzakas. If Ayam said that Naruto's her brother, then he was her brother. Tasumi and Hana had moved towards Ayam, telling her not to interfere but she was worried about the steering contest and the way the ear was becoming thick with tension. Masaru stood his ground and did not divert his eyes as he didn't want to be seen as a coward, despite knowing that he was out of his league. The blonde might technically be a genin, but he was dangerous and he could feel that. As Naruto released a small growl towards Masaru, the raw presence that Naruto was letting off was like a pack alpha, an apex predator. He was the biggest, meanest and most dangerous thing around. Masaru didn't bear his own teeth at the blonde, knowing that Uzumaki was it as a challenge. After a long while, Naruto stopped as he grinned and placed hand on Masaru's shoulder. You better be taking good care of her, or we are going to have some problems, said Naruto. Of course, Naruto-san, I will always treat Ayam Chan like a princess. Masaru said politely, good, but don't call me Naruto-san, honorific fix. I don't like that, said Naruto, as he walked back to Ayam. Too bad he's not an Inuzaka, he'll be clan head in a week, said Tasumi, as Hana could only nod. Time skip, so how did your meeting with Naruto go, you know, asked Sakura, as both of them were getting lunch together. As the both of them had been working as the minute names. But only Sakura was now the apprentice. As a result, both of them work at the hospitals when they work on missions. They were just now taking a lunch break. Embarrassed as usual, Sakura said. Oh? Ino leaned forward in interest as they sounded juicy. Hinata and I walked in and found blood on the wall. Furniture turned over and clothes everywhere. Sounds like there was a fight, Ino said. Yeah, that is what we thought at first, said Sakura. But it was just some rough sex instead, said Sakura. We walked in on him with someone. But they were just cuddling, Sakura said. Any woman we know? Ino asked. Well, never seen her before. I would have remembered her for sure. She had much darker skin than anyone in Konoha, and a vibrant red hair, and Ino cut her off. Slitted red eyes, plus fang teeth just like Naruto. Yeah, how did you know? I heard some rumors about Naruto going on a date with someone like that, not long before he left the village. Also, Shikamaru asked me if I knew anything about a woman like that. Apparently, he saw her in Naruto apartment. When he went to get Naruto for the mission where Sasuke, Ino went quiet, as she knew that Sakura didn't like to be reminded about the loss of her teammate. Sakura eyes dull a bit, but she didn't let that get her too much. It had been three years since then, and she didn't want to be like her sensei, who always spent time at the monument. I never found out anything about her, not her name, not where she lived, not even a single person knew anything about her. Her name is Zana. She might live with Naruto, but I am not sure said Sakura. But I do know that she's known Naruto for a long time now. He also said that she was someone very dear to him. What a strange name. It doesn't sound like any name I ever heard. How do you know that she's known Naruto for a long time now? Well, Naruto said that she was the one that took his virginity when he was 16. Sakura said a blush. 
Well, that's not that long ago. Just a year before you meet Jenny and said Eno. Sakura shifted uncomfortably. Whatever it is, spill, said Eno. I can already tell that you're hiding something. Well, um, she also said that Naruto has been masturbating to the thought of her since he was 11. Sakura managed to say her face burning red. Eno laughed, blushing a bit herself. She just said that? In front of Naruto? Yeah, it was the only time I ever seen him blush before. Well, it was for a short time. Though she didn't say masturbate, she said walking off. Eno burst out laughing. Sounds like Naruto has rubbed off on her a bit. I think it's probably the other way around, Sakura said. She's just as shameless as Naruto and may crack jokes about anything as well. What kind of jokes, Eno asked. He knows like a bloodhound for gossips. She said that she thought that Naruto had ordered some extra entertainment when she saw Hinata and I showed up, implying that she thought we were prostitutes. Sakura said her resignation. She knew that if she didn't tell her, she was going to badger it out of Hinata. Hmm, I'm sure you'll be quite the attraction as a pinker prostitute. Hinata would do well with that figure as well. Eno laughed. Ha ha, Sakura said sarcastically. You think it's fun now, but to the way you dress. I wouldn't be surprised if she asked you to join in right away without confirming if you're a prostitute or not. I'll have you know I'm much too beautiful and refined. To be mistaken for a prostitute, said Eno. Sure you are, said Sakura sarcastically. The two of them quiet for a moment until Eno asked another question. So, how old do you think Zana is? If she's no nurture for that long, then maybe she's pretty old already. Or probably her childhood friends. And Naruto had had a crush on her. Well, I don't know, said Sakura. She was easily the most beautiful and exotic woman I've ever seen before. But I can't place her age. She could be from anywhere to 20 to an extremely well aged 40. That's quite the age gap, said Eno. Funny thing is, Shikamaru couldn't make an estimation of her age either. Some people get all the amazing genes, Sakura said. Thinking about Hinata, large boobs. And the amazing, beautiful genes of Zana. I know for her, it's a curse to be beautiful like me, said Eno. I was thinking of Hinata and Zana actually, said Sakura. And don't even try to pretend that you're not jealous of Hinata's boobs. Eno pouted because Sakura was right. Damn her for being right about her empty of Hinata boobs. Those things had no right being attached to a girl that didn't even stop developing yet. Time skip. So, what did you two want to talk to me about, Nurta asked. As he was drinking tea that Uncle had prepared, he had come across Uncle and Kurenai after making his way to the Insucker compound, and they had asked to talk to him right away. It sounded a bit important and he didn't have anything pressing to do, so he agreed to the meeting. Uncle eye twitch in irritation, tears ceremonies, were kind of a hobby of hers, and having someone gulp it down like that, like it was water, was slightly irritating. It was one of the only things she found annoying about Naruto. Well, there's something that we wanted, and we felt like you were the best person to ask, said Kurenai. Naruto looked curious as he waited for her to elaborate. Nai-chan, and I have thought this over several times while you were gone, and decided that you were the best man for the job, Uncle said. Well, are you going to tell me? said Naruto. We want a baby, said Kurenai. Naruto froze and looked at them for a minute, without saying anything. You want a baby? The both of them looked at each other and nodded. And you want me to get you pregnant? Just me. Uncle is younger and said that she can carry the second one. Kurenai said quickly. Wait, second one? If you'll be willing to father a second one that is, said Kurenai. I'm really not comfortable with that idea. We wouldn't hold you to any responsibility. All we're asking for is a baby. You wouldn't need to be there as a father, said Kurenai. Wham bam, thank you ma'am, said Uncle. As Kurenai gave her a slight glare. What, Uncle said. Kurenai shook her head and focused back on the blonde. I'm not comfortable. Just getting you pregnant and pretending that baby is not mine, said Naruto. Oh, Kurenai said. Well, you could join in. As both Uncle and Naruto looked at her, she blushed a bit. What have you been doing to her in the past three years, Uncle? The Kurenai I meant for Genju to practice would have never even think of something like this, said Naruto as he looked at her. Well, you see, there's this thing I do with my tongue, Uncle said. Only to be interrupted, Uncle Kurenai shouted, blushing furiously. Naruto looked a bit disappointed that he wouldn't get to hear. I'm not comfortable with that either. So I'm gonna have to decline, he said, as he got to his feet. Please, Kurenai said getting up as well. You're the only man that I would consider having a child with. I'll even demonstrate that thing I can do with my tongue, Uncle Bright, moving towards the blonde. Why not just adopt? There are plenty of orphans out there. Would have been thrilled for you guys to be their parents. But Naruto-kun, we really want your babies, both women said. Naruto himself was way freaked out by this. Both of them were acting out of character, and he just wanted to get away for a while. At least until they start trying to use him as, well, donor. Seeing their hands moving towards his pants, Naruto leaped through the window, making an escape. Several moments passed in silence, until both girls break out laughing. They were laughing so hard, tears were leaking from their eyes. Did you see his face, said Uncle, as she collapsed on the couch holding onto her stomach. 
He looked so terrified that Kronai. It took at least 10 minutes for both of them to calm down. Damn. That was funny, Uncle said, wiping her eyes. It had taken Uncle a while, and Kronai had come up with a plan to pay back Naruto for what he did just before he left. They knew enough about Naruto to know that he wasn't the type of guy to ignore any of his possible offsprings. But Kronai knew that he didn't want it involved and start a family just yet. But you know, I really would like a baby, said Kronai suddenly, making Uncle froze. Naruto is clearly is interested, and what he said about plenty of orphans is really true. As Uncle started to get panicked even more, what do you say to the idea of adopting one or two? She said turning towards Uncle. I um I I, I think I hear the Dango owner saying that he got a discount. As Kurnai watched Uncle leap through the window, as Kurnai sit down the smirk on her face, that will teach you to do it right over me while I'm passed out. <laughs> he made you do it your ass. Kurnai was quite pleased with herself for getting Uncle with her own pranks. But she really do want some kids. She was over 30 years old now and she wasn't getting any younger. Uncle would come around her way of thinking soon enough. And she didn't, well, they wouldn't be doing it until she did. Time skip. How's it going, Kakashi Sensei? As Naruto approached, Kakashi was looking at the memorial stone. Oh, you know, same old, same old. Kakashi said the eye smile. Please to see he's now a bigger student. I got something for you, said Naruto. As Kakashi looked towards him, a silver name from a training trip? Not exactly, said Naruto. As he brought out two books, Kakashi one eye gleam. Are, are those? Yes, said Naruto. But two? Jerry Sam must have been very inspired to write in two books. He usually took seven years to write one book. He was inspired to write, said Naruto the Green at the memory. The first one is Ika Ika Tactics, and it will be released to the public soon. As he handed Kakashi the green cover book, Kakashi opened and took a deep breath. That was really weird, given that it was just a book. This one is called Ika Ika Shibari, and it wasn't even supposed to be released. For nearly a year, said Naruto. Kakashi touched the book like it was made from gold itself. Thank you so much, Naruto. This is the best present a student has ever given me. And how many presents have your students ever given you, said Naruto. Well, taking out you. None, Kakashi said. But I'm sure that Sakura just misplaced her present in her salt drawer. Uh-huh. One other thing, don't let Sinati catch you reading second book, or she might kill you. Kakashi looked at him strangely, not understanding why Sinati would be extra upset at him reading this book. Go to page 47, said Naruto. Kakashi did. The well in doubt warrior, Suna. Struggle at her chains. She was at the mercy of her kidnapper, Ranuto. She had fallen for his trap and she was now at his mercy. Her legendary strength, outmaneuvered by his skill binding technique. You cannot hold me long in these chains. They will never resist my strength forever. She spat at him defiantly. You will become my pet long before you escape them. He said, looking down at her, I will never submit to you even if I can't escape on my own. My faithful friend and servant, Shiyun, will free me. Suna declared, I believe I need to silence that defiant mouth of yours before we proceed. He said as he fastened the gag into her mouth, as she could only mumble at the moment now, unable to form proper words. As for your friend and servant, come here. You call master, a voice said. Suna, eyes went wide as she turned to see her dearest friend already in chains and she had already submitted. She's already mine. Suna screamed as the man stepped forward as his eyes were gleaming. Kakashi stopped reading as he looked at his blonde student. Did this actually happen? And is Jerry Sama so suicidal to actually let this be seen by Snali Zama? Well, it didn't happen like that and Shizune wasn't involved. But I did put Snali in chains once. As for Jerry, well, it's up to him, said Naruto. If she finds it, or when she finds it, he'll be dead. So, yeah, that's up to him. I have no idea how you're even alive right now. You must truly be some kind of god amongst men to get away with that, said Kakashi. Well, Snali isn't that bad. If you know how to handle her, you know. Kakashi simply shook his head. It seems that Naruto did not understand what an impossibility had achieved. Time skip. Hokage-sama, we just received an emergency message from the sun. The Kazakage has been kidnapped by the Akasuke. The messenger says he entered Hokage's office, as Naruto was standing right there as well, as he palmed at his face and groaned. Looks like he was going to spend much time with Zan already. Team 7, I will be sending you to the sun to retrieve the Kazakage. Naruto's sigh, life was really predictable. It wasn't that he was against helping Gaara, but why was this shit so poorly timed? Oh well, at least he will try out his best fu in jutsu against the Akasuke. Time skip. Sakura and Kakashi were getting worried at the grin on Naruto's face. Yes, that grin was too widely spread. They knew that he enjoyed a good fight, but he was going up against two extra missing nins and he was smiling from ear to ear. Contrary from what they thought, S-class missing nins were the last thing on Naruto's mind. Naruto's entire thoughts were focusing 
on the fact that Zana fell in love with him. He thought the whole giant training trip was a waste of time, but apparently it did some good. A lot of good actually. He will have to get some nice boost for Snavi for, well, making him go. Life was wonderful right now, and the two missing in that thought that taking him away from his lady was a good idea was going to get their ass kicked. Hey, isn't Temaru's son, said Sakura. As Temaru's walking, we should inform her she would want to know about her brother. Relax bro, I got this, said Naruto. Sakura got a thick mark at being called bro. That better not have been a crack about the size of my breast. She grumbled as Kakashi kept his amusement hidden. Temaru was walking slow back, as she was not in a hurry to get back to the village. Temaru, she heard her name shout, just in time to see a flash of blonde and black before she was tossed over a man's shoulder. Got her, the man said. Much to her alarm, was she being kidnapped? Naruto, you can't just grab her like that. As Temaru remembered that voice, Sakura. It seems like she wasn't being kidnapped, it was just Naruto. Being as crazy as he is, Sakura told her a bit about him. She was skeptical about that because this man was the one that saved Gara and helped him. But, well, this erased all trace of that. Naruto, put me down, she said. No can do, we have a Kazakaki to rescue and there's no time to waste with explanations. What happened to Gara, she said, alarmed. He's been kidnapped by the Akaski, said Naruto as he hopped from tree branch to tree branch. Temaru slid over his shoulder. He's been kidnapped by the Akaski, said Kakashi. The Hokage sent us because we have more experience dealing with the Akaski. But Naruto, you should really put her down. You're making us look like kidnappers. Gara has been taken by the Akaski, Temaru said in shock and horror. Knowing that every moment wasted, her brother was closer to death. Don't worry, Sugar Panties. We'll get your brother back, Naruto said. Please not. Firm hand in her butt and gave that squeeze for reinsurance. Temaru yelled. What the hell are you doing? Your ass is firmer than it used to be. Have you been working out? How the hell would you know that? You never touched my ass before. As she tried to wiggle out of his grasp but she could not. I haven't. Naruto said in confusion. Oh well. I touch a lot of asses. Must have mixed them up. Put me down she said. As Naruto this time set her down. She made a spin and punched him right in the gut. She would have hit him in the face but he was too tall. Naruto simply grinned. Not at all faced by her punch. It would take a lot more than that to hurt him. You said that Gara's been kidnapped by the Akaski. Do you know anything else? She asks. No, but don't worry. We'll save him, said Sakura. As she tried to reassure her, seeing that she was still looking worried, Naruto groped her ass once again. As he ran off, as she chased after him with her fan. I can't believe he's doing that on a mission that is this important, Sakura said. Actually, I think he's doing to take him our mind off her brother for a while. It seemed to be working as well, Kakashi said. As she was chasing Naruto straight towards the sand. You really think he's not just being a pervert as usual? Sakura said. Kakashi shrugged. With Naruto, you would never know. Time skip. Sakura, Kakashi, Chiyo and Naruto were now in an intense standoff with Itachi Uchiha himself. When they got to the sand, they had to wait as Sakura had to work on Konkuro's interests. But he had a piece of cloth that he got from the Akasuke, which Kakashi used to trace. Naruto was impressed with Sakura progress at a minute in. Snaddy must be a slave driver for her to reach his bar in this short time. The little incident with a senile old woman trying to murder Kakashi. Well, it seems like he looked like his father. And his father killed her child and in law. But returned to the matter of hand, Itachi showed up to delay them because it seemed that they still haven't finished extracting the Ichibai. That was good and bad. Good because they weren't too late. Bad because Itachi was a great a badass. That might be trouble dealing with. Naruto san, Kakashi san, it's been a long time since we've seen each other, said Itachi. That it has. We were seven years old last time I saw you. I heard that you killed my little brother, Itachi said. Not because I wanted to. The idiot just wouldn't stop attacking me until things got to the van. He even called me Itachi once, you know. Itachi said nothing and simply stared into her the eyes. Are you upset I killed him? Or are you upset that you didn't get to do it yourself? Itachi didn't visibly react, but he felt a sting of stab into his heart. Had he gone too far that night, would Sasuke be alive if he hadn't used Tsukuyomi on him? Aside from his self-incrimination, he couldn't help but be angry at Naruto. Surely, the blonde could have disabled Sasuke without killing him. You will go no further, he said. As he ignored Naruto's question, All of you, don't look him in the eyes, said Kakashi. But Naruto ignored that as he stared Itachi dead in the eyes. He had nothing to fear from Genjutsu anymore. His shock was condensed to the point where he didn't even need to try to break it. The Tsukuyomi might still be a problem, but until Itachi manifested the monkey to Sharingan, he would be fine. Reaching his cloak, Naruto pulled a pair of black gloves and put them on. They didn't look like anything special, aside from the knuckles. Yes, they had metals on them. It's time for you to come with me, Naruto said, Itachi said. As he slowly pointed a finger at the blonde. Naruto raised his eyebrow and chuckled a bit. Did you just try to put a genjutsu on me, Itachi? Itachi, eyebrow and fraud in confusion. You'd have expected Naruto to charge at a non existing shackle by now. I have as much shock as a Yanbai, but compressed into a smaller body. 
It is like you're trying to use her again dudes against a block of iron. Zana had told him that was the amount of sugar that he had and he was quite pleased as he was experimenting with Fujutsu to expand his coils it was painful but it was beneficial in the end. Everyone looked at him like he was crazy. There were said to be some shinobis who had Biju level chakra but most they would have Ichibai just to want tails. Kisame was called a tail beast without a tail but what Nerd just said Kisame didn't even have close to that and not to mention his genjutsu immunity that was great against some like Hitachi. In that case Nerd, do you think he had taken from the front? But the rest of us attack his blind spots, say Kakashi. No problem, said Naruto. Let's kick this pig. As Naruto dashed towards Itachi, as he closed in Taiju's rage to keep Itachi bait so the others could attack. But he saw the difference between a Sharingan master and a novice like Sasuke, as Itachi saw his move clearly. Before Chi or anyone could take advantage of Itachi blind spot, Naruto was kicked hard in the chest as he was sent sailing back. As Naruto was far too sturdy to be hurt with a kick like that. But Itachi used a chance to play soccer under again Jutsu and maneuver her and Kakashi in sight while Chiu seemed to didn't know when to jump in. Lei Chiu moved towards soccer to release again Jutsu as Naruto picked himself up and dashed forward again. Itachi flashed through hand signs quickly. Fire style. Phoenix flower technique he said. Kakashi dodged a torrent of fireballs as he continued on straight towards Naruto. Itachi tried to place Kakashi in again Jutsu only to find it well inactive. Hey Itachi said Naruto you know that technique just now. Just learn it, said Naruto. Fire style. Fingers flower technique, he said. As he extended his arm as several fireballs extended from it going straight towards Itachi. As Naruto had saw his same security that clone and switched his place with it. As Naruto fired out a wind blast as well, making the fireballs wilder, powerful, and hotter. Itachi eye widened in shock. As he quickly leaped away so he wouldn't be torched. But that ruined Kakashi idea that spring from Naruto to attack Itachi. He manifested his chains and fired it towards Itachi. As Itachi quickly leaped and jumped. As the chains wanted to impale him, he didn't dare move towards Naruto, know that he would be surrounded, and didn't know if Naruto could spawn more of them. He speed through hand signs while jumping. Fire style. Great fire technique. Naruto raised the right hand as the fireball twisted and shrunk, and it was sucked into his hand. As he closed his hand into a fist, smoke came in from it. Learned it, said Naruto. Fire style. Great fireball technique. As Naruto added wind chakra into it, as it was sped up quickly towards Itachi, Itachi tried to dodge. But, a short lack of attention at that one second, the battle was over because it was a chain that was holding onto his leg. The fireball blasted right into him and killed him, ejecting his spirit from the body that he was currently using as his spirit returned back to his real body. His eyes opened up in the cave where the rest of the Akatsuki members were. Pain was surprised to see Itachi back this soon. But guys, be in some right here. For once next part, this time to do like, subscribe, comment, down below, and turn on that notification to stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, stay in tune for the brand new episode that will be coming over and anime king and anime king 3. And I hope you do enjoy each and every one of them. And remember, if you're new, to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying talking about to all of you. So yeah, uh, more for now. See you guys soon. Peace.